I tried Lynx, a new cross-platform framework released by ByteDance, the company behind TikTok. It is a direct competitor to Flutter and React Native, since it also promises to let you write code once and render in iOS, Android, and web. And it's pretty interesting, I have to say. Even though we just heard about it, Lynx has been around for a while internally at ByteDance, which is why on its first public release, we are already at version 3. Lynx is already used in production. It powers the search screen in TikTok, the TikTok Studio app, TikTok Live, and more complex screens like the TikTok Shop. That is to say, it's being used on very important screens. Screens that make money for ByteDance. Apart from links, they also open sourced three other projects. React Links, RS Speed, and Prim.js. That we will talk about later. In the way it works, links is closer to React Native than it is to Flutter. Flutter renders your UI the way a video game engine like Unity does. The app is basically a canvas that the Flutter engine paints your UI on. That is why you can have cross-platform pixel-perfect screens and do all kinds of crazy effects and animations in Flutter. But that is also the reason why you are not getting a truly native UI. And why iOS widgets in Flutter look very Temu-ish, not the real deal. This is again because the engine is not using the native UI elements. It has to paint everything by itself. Links, on the other hand, like React Native, is like a bridge to the native UI elements. When we use the links text component, that will render a UI text view on iOS, a text view on Android, and an X text custom HTML element on web. The same for views, images, and so on. What separates Links from React Native is a very interesting architectural decision that no other framework has done. In Links, there are two runtimes that your code can run on. There is a main thread runtime where the code that handles UI tasks and high priority events runs. And there is a background runtime where the user code runs. The main thread runtime is powered by Prim.js a C++ JavaScript engine optimized for links. The separation between the main thread runtime and the background runtime enables two features that make links very fast. The first one is Instant First Frame Rendering or IFR. Thanks to IFR, there are no white screens when the app starts. The first frame is rendered instantly as you can see in this video. The app opens and after the flash screen, the first frame is rendered instant. There is no white screen. You can see the difference better in these two slowed down videos. Here there are two apps, one built with Expert React Native and one with links that are calculating the Fibonacci sequence, a fairly heavy task on their home screen. As you can see, after the splash screen, the links app renders the first frame instantly, while the Expert React Native app still has a white screen. The second feature is main thread scripting or MTS. Using MTS, if you need to, like for animations or gesture handling, you can choose to run your code on the main thread. Take this code for example. It is a handler for the scroll event that moves an element according to the scroll position. This, by the way, done with CSS, which is how we style links components. Running this code on the background thread, which is the default one, will make the animation laggy. Here you can see it takes a while for the element to catch up with the scroll position. To make the animation smooth, we can promote the code to the main thread. To do this, all we have to do is add the main thread directive to the code. After this change, the animation becomes smooth. And you can see the difference in this video of the code running on the main thread versus the background thread. CSS-wise, Lynx supports styling the components by changing the style attribute directly or by using classes and that CSS files, very similar to the web. As you can see, there is an import there for the root component from the Lynx React package. That is because Lynx, the core engine, isn't specific to React. It is framework agnostic. React Lynx, which was also open source, is a React framework for Lynx. React Lynx takes React code and calls the Lynx engine to render the UI, which means that someone could make a project that does the same thing for Vue or Svelte, for example. With React Lynx, imports look different. Instead of div, we have a view for the web, and instead of importing a view from React Native, we also use view. Also, the events have different names. The build tool for links is called RSPD. This is based on the Rust Web Bundler RS Pack. If after everything you heard, you are curious and you want to give links a go, do it by all means, but there is something to be aware of. Links and React Links are very, 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 very raw. Right now, there are only six built-in elements. View, text, image, scroll view, list, and page. There are no inputs, buttons, or models. There is no navigation library like React Navigation. Only React Router is supported, and there are no native modules for camera access, locations, contacts, etc. 
I am sure they must have a bunch of native modules internally since they are using links in TikTok already. So maybe it is just a matter of time until they are open sourced. Overall, I think Lynx is a very interesting project. I love being able to write code and promote it to the main thread so easily. And I think it's a very interesting architectural decision. And I like the fact that they separated Lynx from React Lynx. It would be really cool to see if some crazy person creates Vue Lynx, Svelte Lynx, Swift Lynx, whatever. Also, competition is good. When frameworks compete, developers win. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Annyeong.